Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at graphs of displacement, velocity and acceleration for simple harmonic motion. So let's get started. So we're going to just take a brief look at the graphs for displacement, velocity and acceleration for an object undergoing SHM. So it says the graphs below show how the displacement, velocity and acceleration in SHM relate to one another. So looking at this picture here, you can see the displacement first against time, velocity against time and acceleration against time. And they've given some variables on the y-axis. So for displacement, you've got the origin, amplitude A and minus A. For velocity, you've got the origin a omega and minus a omega. And for acceleration, you've got the origin and then a omega squared and minus a omega squared. So if we start with the displacement time graph, you can see that the object doesn't start at its equilibrium position at y equals zero. It starts at the maximum displacement from equilibrium position at y equals a at the maximum amplitude. So thinking about initial conditions, if y equals a at time t equals zero, then that means we would start with the expression y equals a cos omega t, i.e. a cosine rather than a sine. So that's why we've got a cosine graph to start off with here. If we were then to differentiate that displacement expression y equals a cos omega t, then we'd end up with velocity v equals minus a omega sine omega t. And that is why the velocity graph for this object has a negative sine graph. So it starts at zero like a sine function would, but then it goes down towards the negative a omega. And lastly, we could differentiate again to get the acceleration. So we could differentiate velocity with respect to time. So instead of v equals minus a omega sine omega t, we would end up with a equals minus a omega squared cos omega t. And that's why we have a cosine graph here, but why it's negative to begin with, because we've got that minus a omega squared. So we've gone from cosine for the displacement to sine for the velocity back to cosine for the acceleration. And we'll now just look at a few specific points on these graphs to see how they relate to each other at different moments in time. So it says that when the spring displacement is at a maximum, its acceleration will be at a maximum and its velocity at a minimum. And we can see that holds true from the graphs here because when the spring displacement is at a maximum, i.e. when y equals a at this point, this point and this point, we can see that the velocity is at a minimum at those points, so velocity is zero there, and then at this point is zero again and zero again there, but the acceleration itself will also be a maximum. So we've got the maximum there, the maximum there and the maximum there. And lastly, as it passes through its equilibrium position, displacement is zero and so is acceleration and therefore unbalanced force or restoring force, but velocity is at a maximum. So a good way to remember that is a simple pendulum, i.e. a mass on a string, which is going to have maximum velocity when it passes through the middle, i.e. the equilibrium position, but displacement and acceleration would be zero at these points. So looking at the graphs again, we're saying that when the object passes through its equilibrium position, such as at this point, this point, this point, and so on, then the velocity will be a maximum value and the acceleration will be a minimum, i.e. zero. And you can see that you've got zero displacement corresponding to zero acceleration there. Again, zero displacement, zero acceleration, zero displacement, zero acceleration, and so on. And then for velocity, you've got zero displacement, but maximum velocity, although it's negative here. And then you've got zero displacement, maximum velocity in the positive direction, zero displacement, maximum velocity in the negative direction again, and so on. So we've seen how we can go from displacement to velocity to acceleration again, just by differentiating to get from displacement to velocity once, and then differentiating again to get from velocity to acceleration. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.